Hey, hello, my friends. Sergio Gomez here. What if there were 10 commandments for your art career that if you follow them will really help you achieve greater success in your art career and your art business? Check it out. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author, and co-founder of the Art Next Level program. And my goal with this channel is to make marketing and art business easy so that you can grow your art career find new opportunities, sell more art, and spend more time creating in the studio. So if you like that, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so that you receive notifications of our future videos. Well, my friends, welcome back. I'm always super excited to be here. I was uh, doing some digging into the web and I realized that I have an article, you know, that I wrote 10 years ago in 2014 that is called the 10 commandments for your art career right here. You can actually Google it and find it that has received thousands upon thousands upon thousands of views from my blog, the Art Next Level Journal. And this is an article that I wrote back then, you know, with the purpose of, you know, doing something fun about this kind of like 10 commandments or 10 ideas that when you apply them as an artist will help you advance, succeed, ac accelerate, you know, your art career further. So. What I want to do in this episode, because when I wrote this article, I didn't have a YouTube channel, so now that I do, and thank you guys for watching, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I want to go over this list of 10 commandments and see if they still hold true 10 years later. Let's see if they still apply. And I'm gonna make comments on each of these as well. And I think the last one is perhaps the most important. I think it's super relevant today. And I'm going to even add a, a bonus <laughs> a bonus commandment, an 11th one, which I think you're going to love. So I think that one, you know, is an update for kind of the world that we live in now in 2024 or whenever you're watching this video. So let's go, my friends, to the 10 commandments for your art career. You know, kind of like this idea came from uh, this, uh, this story of Moses, right? In the biblical times, receiving the 10 commandments in stone uh, for, for the people. And uh, so I'm like, I, I kind of like that analogy, that idea. And so I, I, you know, have my iPad, you know, this is not a stone uh, pad, but this is my iPad, right? So here, here that, the Ten Commandments, let's go for them. Um, number one, you shall be responsible for your art career. That's commandment number one. You shall be responsible for your art career. And this is the idea of you cannot blame others for your own shortcomings as an artist. You cannot blame others you know, for the things that you have not done as an artist, for the choices that you have done as an artist. You know, you cannot blame uh, the circumstances for the things that you have not taken control of your art career. That, you know, the reality is that as artists, what we, um, what we choose is the, the defines, you know, the path we're going to continue on in our art career, right? Uh, so I cannot blame somebody, oh, because such and such, uh, told me to put practice in my website all of a sudden now the art gallery got upset and doesn't like me anymore so now it's that person's fault you know for uh, recommending that you know you cannot blame anybody you are the one who you saw you do that that advice and you actually went and you changed it and now you have problems with your gallery right <laughs> without consulting with your gallery first if you have a gallery so uh, and vice versa right oh I was told uh, never to put prices in my art, no one that I cannot sell anything from my website. Exactly, right? Again, you took somebody else's advice at random, you applied it to yourself, and now you're blaming that person for ruining your art career. And the examples can be going on and on and on forever. So that's number one. You shall be responsible for your art career. Let's go to commandment number two, which I think is also really good. You shall not expect a portfolio review from a curator, a gallery owner or director during an opening night. And I'm going to also add here during an art fair. So I think now this is so totally appropriate during an art fair. Yeah, uh, we cannot expect, you know, to walk around with a portfolio or, you know, with a, or a phone with a bunch of pictures ready to show, so, you know, uh, a gallery owner, a curator during the opening because that's that's working time. You know, I'm a gallery owner, 33 Contemporary Gallery now, almost 20 years, I may add. And, uh, you know, when the opening comes, we are working, you know, the staff of the gallery is working, checking the floor and making sure the artist has everything they need, uh, making sure that the people that you invited are coming in, when they come in, you want to welcome them, you want to make them feel special, if anybody has questions, inquiries, sales, you know, anything, that is not the time for you to come and grab uh, the curator or the gallery or the assistant, you know, for 20 minutes going on and on and on about 
how amazing your art is or the amazing things you're doing in the world. Because that person, I guarantee you right now, if you pay, pay attention to you for 10 seconds and now is scanning the floor to see who they need to go talk to and how they can escape this really awkward conversation. So definitely you should not expect a portfolio review from a curator or a gallery owner or director at the end of opening night. Unless, and here's the caveat, unless, you know, they, that curator, collector um, says, you know what, let me see what you have. Let me let me see what you're doing right now, which it has happened to me. You know, I, sometimes I had the opportunity to look at an artist's portfolio online, you know, maybe because it was really early and we were still waiting for guests or I was outside waiting and uh, for somebody and while they came, well, I talked to an artist. So, um, but you want that to be the invitation to you and that you impose that to somebody else. So that's uh, commandment number two. Let's go to commandment number three. We want to go through all 10 of it. Number three, you shall be thankful for every guest that comes to your solo show. And I remember when I wrote this commandment, commandment number six, you shall be thankful for every guest that comes to your show. I remember like sometimes, you know, with my friends and so on, uh, all the artists, I remember, you know, uh, that an artist had a show and was kind of upset, you know, because certain people did not come and didn't even thank the time to thank those who actually showed up. I guess he was expecting a much bigger crowd. And when that didn't happen, was kind of upset. And now, uh, well, you know. So, you know, this is that idea, right? Every, it's from that point forward, you know, I whenever I see a person walking to my gallery or a show of my own work, I have to make sure I say thank you. Even if I do not know the person, just a quick thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Because that person could have been doing something totally different today. And out of the million things they could have chosen, watch a movie, uh, watch Netflix, go to the restaurant, go to another show, visit another artist or another gallery. They chose to take the time to walk into my show or into my gallery. And for that, I'm super humbled, super honored, and super thankful. Again, you know, be thankful for everyone, be thankful for everyone, and, um, you know, don't underestimate the presence of anybody who's in your show. That's a good one. That's a good one. Let's go to number four. Again, we're going to the for over the 10 commandments of your art career. Number four, I think this was a good one. You shall not assume that the curator remembers all of the details about the installation of your work. <laughs> and I remember when I wrote this point, you know, uh, I wrote it as a curator myself, you know, on the hat, wearing the hat of the gallery and the curator where so many times, you know, in conversations with artists about the show, our upcoming exhibition, they assume that you remembered every detail and every part of the conversation and how the artwork should be installed and this and that and that. And, uh, you know, the reality is that you're not the only artist that that curator is working with. They're curating, they're working with your show and maybe three other shows that are coming up and maybe another guest show that they're doing somewhere else. So, you know, there are all kinds of details that's impossible for the curator or the gallery working with you, you know, to remember. Therefore, you always, and this is a great advice for everyone, you always want to over-communicate, over-communicate. In other words, if you already explained the curator, you know, the best way to take care or hang the particular works, also included in the email that you send the gallery and also print it out and include it, attach it in the box, attach it to the back of the artwork. Because here's what happens a lot of times, it's very common, um, when the curator is looking at the artwork online and then by the time the, art, the creator read the email, it's like, okay, great. Uh, the box arrives with the artwork. A lot of times there are installers who are also uh, working and in installing the show. It's not necessarily that curators going to add every single piece. So this really helps out as the, as the um, uh, curator and the team, you know, begin to plan for the show. You know, if your artwork has the special hanging instructions that are attached, so they start it right away. They can start getting ready when the time to hang it. Everything is nice and smooth. All right, number five. So we're halfway into the 10 commandments of your art career or for your art career. So number five, and this is a good one, dry and ready to hang means dry and ready to hang, okay? I cannot count the number of times my fingers have, you know, end up with paint or a shirt with paint. Uh, for a painting that was received that still went. And sometimes you can even still smell it, particularly oil painting that still went. When a show, you know, when um, 
the submission form says your artwork must be dry and ready to hand. That's what it means. You know? There's no other way around it. And if for any reason it's not, what you need to do is you need to contact the gallery ahead of time. Say, hey, you know, this one's a little tacky. Be careful. Or again, put a, put a mark in the box, in the inside. So when they open the box, they know that, you know, uh, there are some probabilities that, you know, it's, it's, it's not fully dry. So uh, this is important. Also ready to hand, meaning before you bring your show to any gallery, any gallery, make sure that the attachments, uh, whether you use hooks or wired or D-rings, whatever system you use for your artwork, make 100% sure that they're still secure. Let's talk about number six. You shall have all your promotional materials ready. Again, uh, 10 commandments for your eye career is number six. You shall have all your promotional materials ready, right? When the gallery asks you, hey, you know, we need your bio. Don't wait five days to send your bio. Hey, we need your artist statement. Oh, I'm still working on it. And days pass and you're still working on it. Or your website is out of date. Or your Instagram, you know, it shows pictures of your breakfast, but not of your art. You know, as an artist, as a professional artist, you always want to be ready at any given time to send your bio, to send your artist statement, to send what I call also a press kit, because artists who are in my program, in the Artist Next Level program, you know, they know about the press kit because we have talked about it quite, quite many times. And actually, many artists in my program, they have gotten exhibitions because they have a press kit ready to send to somebody who inquires. So, right, you know, they get a business card, you know, at an opening that they went to, the curator, you know, made a good impression, and they say, the curator says, hey, you know, send me some information. As soon as they get home, they can go and write a nice email, attach their press kit, and boom, you know, I really impress that person, impress the curator, so, or the gallery owner. Uh, so you're going to have all those materials always ready to go. I always have an exhibition proposal ready to go where all I need to do is, you know, switch some things around, uh, change uh, maybe a couple of the artworks, you know, that, to pertain to this particular person who I'm sending it, and it's good to go. I don't have to do anything from scratch anymore. So let's go to number seven. Again, here in my tablet of the Ten Commandments for your art career, number seven, you shall not take rejection letters at personal attacks. This is a good one. You should not take rejection letters as personal attacks. Believe me, I'm an artist too, and it hurts when I'm rejected. It hurts when I've submitted to a show or a residency program or a grant, and I didn't get it, right? Get that rejection letter. You know, sorry, but you were not chosen. Um, do not take the curator or the gallery because they did not chose you. You know, the reality is uh, that unless you're on the other side of the desk, it, it is really hard to... to to really uh, understand this, right? It took me a long time until I became a gallery owner and then a curator, and then I'm invited all the time to jury exhibitions, you know, to realize how difficult it is to select a show and to have to say no to so many artists who apply, who could be also potential amazing uh, participants in the exhibition, but for whatever reason, you know, did not make the cut. And it's nothing personal. It simply sometimes... You know, there's just too many paintings and uh, the gallery does, you know, wants to show a little bit of variety. So it has to include some photographs too and some sculptures and some other things or vice versa. There are too many photographs and the gallery wants to also include some other mediums. Uh, or it sometimes could be that, you know, the, the uh, gallery is not big enough and so they have to pick some more words that are smaller versus larger ones that are amazing. So out of the big ones, they might only pick four or five because otherwise, you know, <laughs> There's no space left for anything else. So, you know, that's those are the things that, that have to happen when you apply, right? Say when you apply for a residency program, you know, they have to look at all the people that are involved too. Are you a good match for for this um, group of people who are going to be working together, right? Maybe they already have too many sculptors. Now they maybe they want to bring in a painter. So there are all kinds of different things that happen behind doors that you, you do not know about. And so do not take the, the curator or talk about the curator or don't follow them on social media, on Instagram, because they did not accept. It's not that they don't like your art, you know, it's just it didn't work this time. And sometimes, you know, that curator may pick a different piece, right, on a totally different show. All right, that's a good one. Let's go to number eight. 
of the Ten Commandments. Number eight, you shall invest time in networking and community building. That's a good one too. You know, you as an artist, you need to invest time in networking with others and building community. Community is one of the big values for me as an artist. So when I remember when I wrote this, you know, we were uh, 2000, 2014, we were 10 years into uh, starting the Job Art Center and the gallery, and we're, we were all about building community in the south side of Chicago. And it was, really amaz- it was a really amazing time for us, and we were meeting so many artists, and hundreds of people were coming to our events. And, um, you know, I, I wrote this because the, all that was amazing as it was, it took, it took time, right? It took time from my studio, it took time from my career, but it was so important. And I saw that as an investment. And I can tell you now, you know, 10 years after I wrote this, I'm today benefiting from the investment that I made 10 years ago. You know, if there's one thing you, you know, may remember from this video, hopefully it's that one too. You know, it's all about people. It's always all about people. So invest time, you know, working with people, getting to know people, connecting with people, and being nice to people, right? Try to be nice to people. So that also nice to you. Nobody wants to work with difficult artists, uh, with naughty artists, you know, with people who are just difficult to work with. So you don't want to be that artist. All right, number nine, we're getting to the end of the Ten Commandments. Number nine, you shall not lie on your resume or CV. That's a good one. You shall not lie on your resume or your CV. And I should have this one like with thunder coming, right, as I speak. You shall not lie on your resume or CV. <laughs> Just like that. Because, my friends, this happens. I review, you know, um, resumes all the time from artists that we're working with or that we want to work with and so on. It's getting better now. Again, I wrote this 10 years ago, but it's getting better now because there's more transparency, easier to Google things and to find people and to look at social media, see if such things exist. You know, if you had a show at Rosita's Coffee Shop, don't go to your CV and say you had a solo show at Rosita's Art Center, right? Because Rosita's Coffee Shop is not Rosita's Art Center. So, you know, you are a little bit exaggerating the facts, right? So that, to me, falls into the category of lying, right? And I remember when I wrote these Ten Commandments, I got a lot of, of comments from people about oh, this one, number nine, and, you know, said, you know, that is so true. How I mean, many times we emphasize, uh, exaggerate, you know, things in our art career in order to make them sound much better than they were actually were like. And that brings us to number 10, which I think is really good. Out of the 10 commandments of your career, I think this one is super important. And I'm going to add one more again as a bonus. So this one is number 10, the 10 commandment of your career. You shall be patient and persistent. This is not about something you know, you should not do, but it's actually something that you should do. You shall be patient and persistent. Patience, my friend, they say it's a virtue, right? And in the art career, patience is a double virtue because artists who are patient, who wait, who wait, you know, who wait uh, 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 for the right time, for the right opportunity, for the right connection, for the right moment, when that moment comes, they they can capitalize on that moment, right? And along with patience comes persistence. You can say, well, I'm gonna wait, and I've been waiting forever, but then persistence is about work. So it's both, you wait, but you work hard, you work hard, you work hard. That's persistence, right? You continue working, you continue knocking on doors, you continue connecting with people. One guy said no, well, there, there, guess what? There are thousands more. You know, one art center said no, well, you, could, you continue moving. One uh, curator said no, and that's okay. You know, it was not the time. You just keep on moving. Sometimes 10 years later, that curator is going to say, yes, this is the time. And that has happened to me and also has happened to me as a curator, you know, working with an artist who at that moment wasn't right. You know, it wasn't the right moment or the work was not there yet, in my opinion. And But they persisted. They continued working and they're working and working. And eventually, you know, they were in my shows or they were part of the gallery or things like that, right? Because that was persistence and then there was growth when they was patient. They did not give up. They did not say, well, you know, person hates me or whatever, but there was patience and persistence. And I found in my, in my many years working with many artists that uh, artists who persist, who persist and are patient, you know, eventually get really great opportunities. 
regardless of their talent, which is another point, even regardless of their talent, there are artists who are very talented, but who are not patient. They want everything quick and fast because they think they're the best and who are not persistent enough. So they don't get the opportunity. So those two things working against it versus artists who may not have that huge of a talent, you know, but they are very patient. They're working hard, diligent, persistent, persistent. Their art gets better. They become more mature and now they get better opportunities because of it. They're not trying to look for the shortcut. In other words, you know, they are not trying to look for that shortcut. They're, they're, they're making their way uh, by working hard. So that's something, my friend, that uh, you may want to also think about as the number 10 of the 10 commandments for your art career. And I'm going to add one last one, which maybe you have heard me say, you know, as I look at these 10 commandments for your art career that I wrote 10 years ago, and you can still find it in Google, uh, this article. And the 11th one, the bonus, I'm going to give you, which is really good. Just because you posted it once doesn't mean everybody saw it. You have heard me probably say that one in my podcast and some of my videos on Instagram. Just because you posted it once doesn't mean everybody saw it. In our minds, as artists, when we go to Instagram, we go to social media, you have a show that's coming up or a big event, or you just release a new painting or a new body of work, and you go and you post it once. And in your mind, like, I did the marketing. I did the marketing. You know, now everybody knows it's out there. The reality is that when you post in your social media, it's said that about maybe 15%, 20 in the most on a good day of your audience will actually see the post. That means about 75, 20% of people in your audience had no clue you had a show, had no clue you had, you know, a new painting, has no clue, you know, of the open studio that you're doing next week because you only posted it once and you saw everybody saw it. Say, okay, Sergio, I'm going to post it twice. <laughs> well, do the math. So a lot of times the same people that saw the first one, they have seen the second one plus a few more. So that's why you got to keep uh, sharing consistently in different ways. So if I have a show or if I have an event, if I'm doing a release, for example, and that has been one of the big secrets of many of my sold out releases that I have done is that you know, I have this thing that's called the Ultimate Marketing Calendar that is inside of my coaching program, which you should sign up. If you're not part of the Arnix Level program, you should sign up because there's all kinds of amazing things, including this Ultimate Marketing Calendar. It's a, it's a four-week process to promote your shows, to promote anything that you have scheduled. And uh, it's, it's all about that. It's about getting visibility, right? About getting visibility for the things you want to do so that there's no excuses, so that people know what you are doing in in different ways, right? You don't want to put the same post 20 times because that doesn't work either. Uh, it's all the variety of things, all the, the different strategies that we do that will be a whole entire different video. But that's the, that's the 11 one, right? Just because you posted it, one doesn't mean anybody saw it. So my friend, you know, these are the 10 commandments of your art career, which are still, you know, very important in 2024. They're still, you know, relevant today, even though I wrote it. 10 years ago, they're still really good. You still should pay attention to these things. You should still um, think about these just as I am doing right now because I think they're all relevant. None of them have, you know, lost their relevancy. I think they're all very important. Even I think more now because of how the world has changed and how much we work, you know, within also a digital environment. You know, uh, I think it's super important that we think about these things and we continue working. And if you want to really take this even to a greater level, you want to really push them to to the next level, to a higher, um, you know, notch and, and really achieve greater success. Well, that's why we have the program inside our next level that's called the, the Art Business Growth Challenge. And the Art Business Growth Challenge, which is a seven-week challenge, will help you take everything that I mentioned, plus a lot more looking at all the aspects of your art career and help you grow your art career in your mindset, how you think about your art, your wellness, how you feel about your art, your studio practice, you know, if you feel stuck in your art, in your art making, it will help you with that, you know, with your art business as well. Super important, right? How does your artwork goes from your studio out into the world? It will help you create a business plan. I will help you look at your art statement, your artist on the mission statement. It will help you also look at your marketing, give your strategies, sell so that you can, you know, sell more art and experience greater success, find more art collectors for your art. Everything is packaged. It's not like one of those programs that you learn something a little bit and then you got to go back for a little bit or go somewhere else for every, somewhere else. You know, we, com we compartment 
everything together into one package to make it an amazing, amazing challenge. Seven uh, week art business growth challenge. You can find us uh, at theartistnextlevel.com. Sign up for the challenge. We always have amazing offers that you can take so that you can try it. You can get it started. And I hope to see you there. I'll work with you in the, in the challenge. You can ask me questions there. And also our team of coaches can work with us and you get to meet hundreds of artists from around the world who are also working with us at any given time. So thank you for watching, my friend. Uh, this was really awesome. And I'm going to look into my archives, see what other really good articles I have written in the past that maybe we can bring them back and talk about it. Have a good day. But wait, before you leave this video, if you are an artist who wants to grow your art career and wants to achieve greater success, make sure you check out the Art Next Level program. You will find a link under this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next video that we have recommended just for you.